When it comes to syncing the data between your iOS device and your computer, you have the choice of doing so by connecting your device to your Mac or PC with the included USB cable, or you can do so wirelessly as long as your device and your computer are on the same wireless network. But in order to sync wirelessly, you need to set up your device first by connecting one end of the included USB cable into the device and the other end into your computer. If iTunes isn't currently open, it may open once your iPhone or iPod Touch is detected, but that depends on a setting we'll look at shortly. If iTunes doesn't open, go ahead and open it manually yourself. When you first connect an iPhone or iPod Touch to your computer, you may have to go through a series of screens where you're asked to agree to a licensing agreement or to register your iPod. Go ahead and do that on your own, and eventually you'll be back in your main iTunes window, and your device should show up under Devices in the Source pane. As you can see, I currently have my iPhone plugged into my Mac, and it's showing up under Devices here in the Source pane of iTunes. The first thing you should see when you select your device in the source pane is that the main part of the iTunes window is organized into a series of tabs with the Summary tab selected. Under Summary, you can find your device's vitals like its name, capacity, software version, and serial number. Incidentally, if you want to change the name of your device, just click it in the source pane and type a new name. This might be helpful if you have more than one of the same iPod in the house and you want to make sure your name is associated with yours. Under the version section, you'll either see a message telling you that your iPod or iPhone software is up to date, or a message that newer versions of the iPod software is available. Apple is constantly releasing updates to its iPods, sometimes fixing bugs, other times adding major new features. Generally, it's a good idea to update to the latest version of the software when it becomes available. Just click the Update button that appears to download and install the software. Or in this case, I can click Check for Update to have iTunes check for new software. And I can see I'm running the current version. This is also where you'll find the button to restore your iPod Touch or iPhone. There may come a time when your device is just acting plain weird. Maybe it's not booting up right or it's locked up. Now there are various fixes and solutions you can find on Apple's website, and we'll talk more about this in the chapter on troubleshooting, but as a last resort, you can click the Restore button to return the iPod to its factory new condition. I say it's a last resort because restoring an iPhone or iPod completely erases it and installs a fresh copy of the software on it, so you'll lose all the items stored on it. If you back up your phone or iPod regularly, which again we'll talk about how to do in the troubleshooting chapter, you should have copies of everything in iTunes anyway. But it takes time to recopy everything back to your device, so use the Restore button as a last measure. Next we have the Backup section. This includes an option to backup to iCloud, which I'll talk about in its own movie near the end of this chapter. Now under the Options section we have several options or checkboxes. You can see that I have Open iTunes when this iPhone is connected checked, and I think that's pretty self-explanatory. With this option checked, iTunes will open whenever you connect your iPhone to your computer. Next we have Sync with this iPhone over Wi-Fi. This is the checkbox you want to check if you want the ability to sync your device with iTunes without connecting it with the USB cable. I'll cover this option in its own movie at the end of this chapter. Next we have Sync only checked songs and videos. With this option checked, iTunes won't include any unchecked files when it copies files to your iPod. And that's referring to the checkboxes that appear next to your files in your library. So if I go into my music library here, you can see all of my files are currently checked. But if there are certain songs I don't want copied over to my device, I can just uncheck them. The next two options are useful for saving space on your device. If you check Prefer Standard Definition Videos, and you have two versions of the same video in iTunes, one Standard Definition and one High Definition, the Standard Definition video will be copied over to your device by default. The option to convert higher bitrate songs to, in this case, 128 kilobits per second AAC, allows iTunes to automatically convert larger song files into smaller song files before copying them to your device. The next option is Manually Manage Music and Videos. This is the option that lets you manually drag songs and videos to your iPod or iPhone, rather than letting iTunes move files automatically for you. Now the question often comes up here as to which option is better, manual updating or automatic syncing. And it really depends on whether you prefer the control of manually managing your iPod, or if you prefer to set up some rules and playlists to determine what gets copied to your iPod. We'll look at the syncing options in just a moment, but for now I'm going to leave this unchecked. So those are the items and options you'll find under the Summary tab when you connect your iPhone or iPod Touch. In the rest of this chapter, we'll work our way through the rest of the tabs and see how to manage the contents of your iPhone or iPod Touch.